Thank you for joining us. If you are a service provider or a bride, I hope you find this webinar informative. Up next is Tracy Kakuru of Strats Bridal. Hi, my name is Tracy Kakuru Otetina. I'm the founder of Strat Bridal. In today's webinar, hosted by Pink Coconut Deco, I'll be talking about how COVID-19 has affected the bridal business, and I'll also be giving you some tips on what to look out for this season. Strat Bridal is an upscale boutique located in Intinda, Kampala. We stock luxurious and modern gowns, um, all the way from bridal gowns to changing dresses to accessories, tiaras, everything that a bride would need on her special day. Um, in 2016, on my um, wedding, when I was getting married, I noticed a gap in the market. Um, there are so many bridal stores that offer really nice gowns, but they do not necessarily offer the experience. So um, during that time, that's what I was searching for. I wanted to come to a place and have a special moment with my family, with my friends, in a spacious environment. And that is how Strat Bridal was formed. So it's not only a boutique that um, stocks gowns, all these luxurious gowns, but it's also a special place where it can come and really have that once in a lifetime moment. And we are very excited that we have managed to, to achieve that. When COVID-19 happened, uh, the bridal business for me was affected because we get our gowns from different locations in the world. Um, some of our guns come from Dubai, Dublin, they come from Ukraine. So we were affected because most of our um, suppliers were on lockdown and they were not able to provide our gowns on time and even some stop production for a bit. However, we were greatly impacted when the lockdown actually happened in Uganda because therefore we could not open our doors to brides we could not um, receive any guests in our stores, were not allowed to have any of the operations. Uh, mostly because our business is a very contact-based business. It involves a lot of physical contact, um, trying on dresses, having different people in the store. We used to host about maybe a bridal party of 10 people, 12 people in our store, but we could no longer do that. So I had to think about how different we can run this business because um, there are so many brides who cancelled however since um, the lockdown has been eased there are so many people who are going to get married so we had to adjust the business so that it's safe and uh, convenient for our brides so we have tried to adjust to the times we make sure that we are there for our brides most of our appointments are actually done virtually um, what you would do is just reach out to the Strat Bridal team, our bridal consultant will have a call with you. You don't necessarily, as a bride, need to come here for your first meeting. Your first meeting can be with me or with my team virtually. Um, measurements, these days I send a video on how to measure yourself if you really can't make it to the shop. Um, we have an online catalog, you can scroll through anything you want. And then once an appropriate time is decided, we will host a bridal party of four. We have also limited physical contact between the bride and the bridal consultant. How have we done this? We encourage our brides to come with a bridal party. It could be um, your mother, your uh, maid of honor, those people that you're close to can help you in the changing room, um, zip you up if need be, so that um, the contact between the bride and the bridal consultant is only on a necessary basis. Some trends to look out for this season. I know brides traditionally have an all white gown. However, the different trends show that a champagne off white gown is very beautiful. We have some in the store that are very elegant. Um, brides also love very flowy dresses and not necessarily a big you know, overwhelming gown, but something very subtle, very simple um, that that you would look beautiful in on your day. Every bride should have a statement piece. If your statement piece is a glowing tiara, then that should be the piece. If it's um, statement big earrings, then that should not take the focus of your gown. So choose a statement piece that's perfect for your dress, but don't mix two big statement pieces because it can be overwhelming to the eye and you always want to have a simple and classic look. Understandably, this situation has affected many brides financially. 
Um, my advice for a cheap and affordable option would be hiring a gown. In our store, we have a variety of gowns, ballroom, trumpet, satin, in different sizes. So the option of hiring gives the bride a chance to spend little but get the, the gown of her dreams. When you hire the gown, it can be tailor-made to your preference. If you want sleeves, they can be added. If you don't want sleeves, they can be removed. If you want your gown to be adjusted, then we'll do that. It's, um, it's a more affordable option and you'll still get the gown of your dreams. We give our brides a grace period on when they can return the gown. They will leave a deposit and their national ID that will secure the fact that they will bring back the gown. So once they do, the gown will be checked and your deposit will be given back to you. It's really as simple as that. If a bride is interested in buying the gowns, depending on the luxurious type of look that you want, um, the ranges probably start from two million onwards. So it's still affordable. You can have that gown, you can, you can keep it, you can pass it on to the next generation, and that would be something really special for you. And lastly, if you're a 2020 bride looking for that say yes to the dress experience, you want to come here with your bridal party and show off that amazing, beautiful gown, an experience that you will have for a lifetime. We welcome you to Strat Bridal. Again, my name is Tracy Kokuru Otatina of Strat Bridal. Thank you so much for watching this webinar and thank you Pink Coconut Deco for having me. Coming up is Serena Tugume of Serene Beauty. Hi, my name is Serena Tugume of Serene Beauty. In today's webinar hosted by Pink Coconut, I'll be talking about makeup post-COVID. Serene Beauty is a team of creative hair and makeup artists that create the most beautiful bridal teams in Uganda. We do hair styling, makeup, manicure and pedicure, massage. We offer accommodation and breakfast to our bridal teams so that we can take away the stress related to their wedding planning. And we also can come to your hotel room if that's your preference. COVID-19 is here with us and definitely that has affected a lot of our personalized services. Our business is one that really is in contact with our clients. And it's not just our business, all businesses have been affected by COVID-19. And as business owners, we've all had to take time to think through how this affects us, what's going to change, what do we need to do differently? How are we going to adjust our businesses to serve our customers while taking care of their health and our own health, the health of our employees, and basically everybody that we come into contact with. You're probably thinking about your first visit to your makeup artist or hairstylist post-COVID and wondering, will I be safe? Have they put into consideration my safety? What measures have they put in place? Will I catch the virus at that visit? And those are all things to really think about. Hygiene has always been important to us, and it still is. But in the wake of COVID-19, we have adopted additional precautionary measures and protocols to ensure that our employees and clients are safe well in our space. I think the first most important thing is before you even come to our premises is to book your appointment. Uh, because of social distancing, we will only be able to work on a specific number of people at a time. At Serene Beauty, we operate in three apartments. Uh, with one serving as our working space. We can only have a limited number of people within our working space at a time. So all our bridal teams wait in their rooms until they are ready to be called. I think one key consideration for people in this business is to ensure that you have a limited number of people within your operating premises at a time to ensure social distancing. Another key consideration for everybody in this business is that you're going to invest in certain key tools for admitting people within your premises, as well as protective gear for you when you are working. You will need to invest in personal protective gear. For us in this business, you need a face mask, definitely. And taking it even further, you will need some, a face shield to prevent you from any splash while you're working. This is mostly because in our business, you are working with the soft parts or the openings on the person's face. And so at most, care has got to be taken into consideration. 
certain practices are now going to be a must in this business like washing hands between clients and everyone in this business also is going to have to invest more in additional makeup brushes and beauty blenders so that you can work through several clients without reusing the brushes and beauty blenders. Clients should feel comfortable to carry their own product and makeup brushes if that makes them feel safer so that then you go to your makeup artist because you trust their skill and their ability to bring out the best of you but then you also feel safer using your own product. It's an option that's available. But also you may be somewhere, maybe you've traveled and you're not able to access your favorite makeup artist. So it's good to have your own makeup and you'll be able to achieve what you're looking for in their absence. If for example, for your wedding, your makeup has been done and it's all looking perfect, but during the day you want to touch it up, um, I think the best thing you can do right now is invest in a good powder and a good lipstick and good lip gloss to be able to do this for yourself, just to go over your face and your, your lip so that it's fresh. Again, the less contact you have with another person, the better for you. So if you can have your own product and you touch up on your own, that's I think better. Let's say you're having your scientific wedding or birthday or bridal shower and your makeup artist is going to be doing your makeup. You will have your production crew, your video and photography team present. Again, you will need to really consider social distancing. They will need to capture those details while maintaining a safe distance and be able to step away when they are not required in the moment. Again, it is important for the video crew to also wear their masks, no matter how uncomfortable it is. It is important to protect one another. I think for someone who is trying to get into this business, I think it's great. It's great to do something that you're passionate about. If it's something you want to get into because you love helping people discover their own beauty, bringing their inner beauty to the fore, like we say at Serene Beauty, your job is to help your clients discover their own beauty, helping them to meet their most beautiful version. Uh, by just enhancing their features. You're not, they're not more beautiful with makeup, but you're helping them enhance their beautiful features. In this business, you've got to be patient with your clients. It's important to listen. You've got to realize that when someone entrusts you with their face, they're giving you a big part of who they are. And so they've trusted you. You've got to take care of them. Give them your best. Listen to them advise and steer them in a direction um, that makes them feel comfortable and happy with the final look. Thank you very much for watching. Again, my name is Serena Tugume from Serene Beauty. Thank you Pink Coconut for inviting us to be part of this webinar. I look forward to engaging with you even more on our social media platforms. Bye-bye. Joining us is James Lubinga of Paramount Images Studio. My name is James Lubinga, the CEO of Paramount Images Studio. Uh, we are a company doing wedding photograph and video mainly, and basically events. So the COVID-19 has greatly affected the wedding industry, but to us, it is an opportunity to reinvent, develop, and grow more. Uh, during this season, we have been able actually to book more clients than before because of one major factor, which I'll start with for the photographers, is online presence. It is always good to have a strong online presence, not just to have pages there, but they should be active. The pages shouldn't be not boards. You must put content and let that content be consumable, let it be engaging. So being able to have YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, a website, a blog, which communicates to people is one of the most important things which you'll be able to use and earn from photography during this period. Even if COVID goes for the next two or three years, uh, the, the internet connects you to the whole world. You can be able to book people in Kenya, US, Japan, China, and everywhere. So online presence is going to help photographers a lot to benefit and to stay afloat. And then the other factor is collaborations. 
packages today have to be tailor made and they should be uh, made basing on the fact that people are scaling down. So if people are scaling down, what does that mean? That means that instead of someone paying 50 million for an event, is going to have something like 20 million. And once you find a way how he's going to distribute that money, the photographer will take, the event planner will take, the decorator will take the venue. So if you collaborate with other service providers, for example, the decorators, uh, the cake people, the venue people, and you come up with one package that you can be able to work with, you work with them and be able to come up with something, it is going to help a lot. Because if you want to go far, you move as a group. But if you want to go fast, you go alone. So I would encourage people to go alone at this time. You need someone to hold your hand and you need to hold another person's hand. That is one way the photographers will be able to stay afloat. Then uh, another factor is monetization or another way in which you can stay uh, afloat monetization here i mean you have a lot of content which is consumable and people can pay for it the first step is gogo gogo can pay for this content they can place ads on your page and you get that money even if you are getting 20 dollars a day that is good enough so if you have pay if facebook is paying you gogo is paying you your page, your YouTube, uh, your YouTube channel is monetized, and then your website is also monetized. That's a lot of money. It is passive income. Even your children and grandchildren will be benefiting from it. So you shouldn't wait for weddings to be coming in each and every day. Then, if you are a stock photographer, people can, should now invest in stock photography. If uh, people are not going to be moving, for example, tourists, but they want to see gorillas, they want to see animals, basically. Take those photos, create a website, sell them online. One picture can be bought by more than a million people everywhere in the world. So when you monetize your content, you can be able to make a lot of money. You don't need to be working every day. Uh, then another important thing is charging your worth. Uh, the fact that now people have not been working, chances are high that when an event comes, they will be able to take any money. Now that is going to, again, bring you cheap clients over and over again. Or you are not going to get the best. What does that mean? That means that do not undercharge. Know your worth. Know how much you weigh. People will give you that money. Don't be desperate. To do work it's better to do few jobs but those jobs will earn you a lot have a standard a starting point or a standard price to start from we call it a professional fee if you are doing photography what is your professional fee there are so many costs to look at the printers won't know that there is covid camera manufacturers do not do not understand COVID. The lenses are going to remain expensive. Photo books are going to remain expensive. Boards, frames, everything. But if you undercharge, where are you going to get the money? So know your worth. Charge some reasonable amount, which will keep you afloat. Then reinvent. Reinventing. On an event, you can be able to provide many things. The fact that now there are scientific weddings going on, Instead of 1,000 people, we are having 10, 20, 30. Where are the other 950? They, they can watch online, do live stream. Live streaming is there to go now. So they can give you the other money for filming the event there, but also for live streaming to their Facebook and YouTube channels. That is some more money to get. So you realize that everyone in the world, wherever they are, they will be watching the wedding. Do a same day edit. So you know, you can add more items to the package or print albums. The fact that a few people are attending, now we have the opportunity to make so many albums for these people and these albums will make it, bring in more money. 
their weddings have done and, and are making more than 15 albums from one event. So I encourage photographers to think beyond this event. When you get one event, that is an opportunity to make millions. Just one like this. Uh, continuous learning. Continuous learning is going to help photographers, videographers, content creators to stay afloat. Today, if I know how to shoot a picture using one light, can I try out lighting generally? Or can I learn how to use natural light? The fact that now we have been limited to using uh, big stuff. We're no longer going with a lot of stuff. So can I work alone without having a big softbox, and, uh, having someone flying a drone, you know? Can you be able to learn how to do most of these things? Can you do your own digital marketing without employing the other person such that you can do digital marketing because the time is there, you're not working every day. You can edit instead of getting an editor, a digital marketer, some guy to send, someone to run this and that. When you learn most of these things, you cut down on the cost. So the three million will be enough for you to shoot that wedding because you are doing most of the things. You are shooting, you're editing, you're posting, you are designing the album. What else? So COVID is helping us to know that we have been wasting a lot. It is an opportunity for us to develop. A lot of money has been left on the table, has been wasted because you are having a lot to spend. The first thing we should all think of is contacting our clients and checking on them. If you have booked weddings or any events, please keep checking on these people. Update them on what is going on in the market. If you're on the ground, if you have some people in the diaspora, let them know. What for you, what you need to do is to know, is this hotel open? Are these venues accessible? Because clients now will no longer know where to do memorandum from, where to do the pre-wedding from, whether the churches now allow up to this time. For us photographers, we should be knowledgeable now. We should know what is going on and keep helping these people. So checking on them gives them more energy. Even it gives you more credibility that you mind about people. So we need to check on our clients. Second, also go through your old lists. Emails. Keep sending them emails. Many referrals come from such platforms when you check on your people. Two, contracts. If you sign contracts with the people, it is going to create a very good relationship with them. How does it help you as a photographer? If an event is cancelled, there are guidelines on the contract. Are you refunding all the money? part of the money or nothing at all. If it is scaled down, what happened? What is the contract saying? That if I'm shooting 10 people, I, I'm, are you going to use an old camera or a small camera? That doesn't exist. It will mean the same gear, same skill, same printing. Everything remains the same, even if people are few apart from maybe the labor force but still for video you can't shoot it alone you need different angles you can't be one man running around charging the battery going camera one camera to sound moving the uh, you know everything so with us in the photography industry we don't charge numbers we charge the service so let your contract be speaking things which protect you and protect the client. Let the, before they pay, let them know that you do not refund the 50%, or when, when they postponed up to 2021, their money will still be used during that time. That helps you a lot. So it is important to, communicate, to, to work with the clients, not as enemies, but as friends, create a friendship. Then webinars, webinars, online conferences. These are things photographers should do as a group or as an individual on your page. 
set up webinars, do blogging. This is it. We have a lot of time now to sit and write, to talk now like what we're doing now, such that we educate people on some of the things they should be doing. People are confused now. You know, this is culture. Events involve the auto culture. They have to give a speech. They have to call so and so come and talk, come and advise the bride. Now we're having 10 people. So they are thinking, no, we're not doing the event. What if COVID stays the normal? So we need to find ways in which we advise them. Okay? We set up webinars, we blog, we tell them the best way to do a scientific wedding. Maybe we can record a memorial and we can record all these people prior to the event. We can record their speeches and then they are played, you know. Or you can always have a big event and use the scientific wedding as the memorial end, or as something to broadcast on that day. So let us all rise up, team up, and advise these people, organize webinars, and call them to attend. So my appeal to the photographers that do, and video people, do not sit there and cry. Come up and work. Get up. Well, luckily, okay, when you're at home, you think the world is not moving. The world is moving fast. And today, survival is no longer for the fittest. Survival is for the fastest and the smartest. So, ask yourself, are you smart? And are you fast enough? So, if you're not fast enough, the world is leaving you. Many people do not expect this COVID. You never know. Something big is coming. Beyond COVID, can you survive? Even if you leave the, your location, can you still survive? Can you still do events even if you go to Nairobi or Zanzibar? Can, still, can people still book you? So survival is for the smartest. We need to be smart and we need to be uh, fast. Then my last check on this is that all of us, when we are working, let's, let us emphasize solving a problem, especially for the clients. We all have cameras, we have light, we, we know where they print photo books, but after all that it has been known, which problem are you solving? So as we are covering all this, we must be problem solvers. We must be in position to solve a problem. When you're taking your photos, know the problem you're solving. Are you solving the problem of language? Are you solving the problem of Aledi Valley? Is it customer care? Is it that good color people are looking for that another photographer cannot provide? Okay. Is it the efficiency in doing the job? What problem are you solving on the market? So if you can solve a problem, then everything is okay. Thank you so much. Coming up is Veronica Rubanga, a renowned wedding and events planner. Hi guys, my name is Veronica and I work with Fenon. I'm an events planner. And on today's webinar, I'll be talking about wedding planning specifically. So within the time I have, I'll try to take you through the process of wedding planning from start to finish and uh, possibly make you understand for those that are trying to be planners or for those that are on the client side and you're a bride and are wondering what it takes to plan a wedding. So different clients, different brides have different needs. And uh, one thing as a planner that you need to do is kind of figure out who your client is, what type of person are they, what do they like. Like you read them so that it's easier to create like a bond. You need to understand your bride enough to understand what it is they want. Because some people are very complicated while others are simple and the simple ones actually are usually the hardest ones because they kind of don't know what they want but we need to understand that uh, clients communicate differently and a lot of, because it's someone's wedding a few of them might slightly be out of character and they might not know how to express what it is exactly that they want 
So as a planner, you need to be the bridge. You need to be flexible enough to know that when something comes up and changes, you are flexible enough to change it. You need to to be able to connect with your bride or your client, whoever it might be. The next thing is um, understanding really your deliverables when it comes to the job. Uh, where is this wedding going to be? Who do I need to get on board to help me achieve the dream of my client? This is service provider sourcing. I need to know that this is the best photographer for this person. This is the best videographer for this person. This is the best decorator for this person. Because as, as a planner, I work with so many different service providers. So a lot of the times you kind of profile them and you know that this is very hectic and who can handle hectic. This is, you know, moderate, who can handle moderate. So you advise your client depending on what you've learned from them. Harmonizing the wedding committee and your service providers is another key factor when it comes to wedding planning. Uh, you need to know how you're going to divide the resources that you have and how you're going to manage the wedding committee because all of them have a specific task. So that's people management. You're managing every individual depending on their task. So you need to establish clear lines of communication. You need to have a checklist and make sure that who, whoever is supposed to be doing something is doing it. You need to follow it up and within specific timelines. So you're achieving a goal. You have to know if it's six months to my wedding, by four months I should have done A, B, C, D sent out my invitations, I should have paid for the venue already, I should have already paid my service providers, given them a deposit so that the job is confirmed and they know they are working and they are planning towards a specific goal. Speaking of uh, venues and the like, in the Ugandan market, you always have to book your venues well in advance because in today's world, somehow you will find that if you have want a December wedding, there's no December date. So if you want a December wedding, by April, Feb, you should have already locked down on your venue because everybody's getting married. So you have to know the seasons as well. Is it going to be a rainy season? Is it a sunny season? If it's a sunny season. Are you in a tent that's going to be very hot? How are my guests going to feel when they come to my wedding? So all these are factors that you need to advise your, your bride when they're planning for their wedding. When planning a wedding, the most important thing is the budget. You need to know from the time you get engaged what kind of budget you're working with because it will guide you all throughout the planning process. You have to know how much the wedding is going to cost you. And you have to know that by the time the wedding is done, you're not drowning in debt. So I always advise people to plan within their means. If your budget is not as big as you hope it should, you can plan within your means. And with the event planner, we can help you marry your dream and your budget so that it, it comes to fruition, basically. In addition to the budget limitations, you have to have the right mindset as well. Uh, you need to know that your budget should be flexible enough for you to know what is a priority and what isn't. Because when it comes down to actual, actually seeing the money go, you will see that you know there's some things that you really want and you have to have them while there are some things that you might not necessarily think are that important. So you have to be able to be flexible with that as well. Always, always the budget causes a lot of strain on couples, brides especially. And this is one thing that you have to be clear with, with your partner, whoever you're getting married to, and with your planner so that at the end of the day, it's uh, smooth sailing. So chances are, by the time your wedding date arrives, you probably haven't cleared all the service providers, which it's advisable, if you can, to take out as much debt as you can, so that by the time the wedding arrives, 
you don't have worries of oh now i need to look for money to do this i need to look for money to give this person so this all goes it goes back to the planning ahead you have to know that a week to the wedding i should have cleared a large percentage of my wedding and in the event that that doesn't happen you have to have a clear communication with your planner or if you're dealing with the service provider directly you need to speak with them so that they understand and know that you're telling them prior you're not just waiting you're not just waiting for after the wedding you're done you're married and now the service provider is going to be hounding you they need their money and you will not enjoy you know your honeymoon period because you're worried about the debt so this all goes back still to the budget I always tell people to really plan within their means. When you're coming up with a guest list, the, the more the guests, the more money you have to spend because each guest will cost you a certain amount of money. And that means the more they are, the more money you're spending. So when weddings, I know families a lot of the time have a lot to do with your guest list, but always know that if, you cannot financially sustain the kind of wedding maybe your parents, your your relatives would want. Do the kind of wedding that you would want and get the people that you really, really need there so that you have a small but really beautiful event and that's within your means. So anyone out there that's considering being a planner or starting an event planning business, wedding planning business, don't be discouraged by the times utilize this time to kind of reinvent yourself or invent yourself and you know learn more about what it's about you need certain qualities to be able to do the job that we do most importantly you need to be patient because you deal with so many kinds of characters so you never know you know who you're dealing with so you always have to be understanding you know when a client kind of slows you down you need to Take everything within stride, basically. Just see it through and, you know, make your a happy bride is the best thing that you can have. Um, secondly, you have to have very good interpersonal skills. You have to be able to communicate. When you have to let down your client, you have to know how to let them down. You have to just, like, always communicate with them so that you're on the same page. Always know that your mind is your greatest resource. Um, you don't have to have 100 million shillings in your bank account to start planning an event. You All you need is your mind and the right people to work with. Be out there, grow your network, um, create relationships like I have with Pink Coconut who has given me this opportunity to summarize what I do for you and give you a little bit of hope and yeah joining us is farida kalibatanya of tasty treats hi my name is farida kalibatanya i'm the proprietor of tasty treats limited we have been in business for the past seven years and we're proud to have serviced some of the most distinguished clients and weddings in uganda in today's webinar i'll be talking to you about how bakeries and confectionaries can offer better and unique quality services post-COVID-19. Because of the change in the behavioral patterns of our customers, we need to make certain changes. One, we as service providers need to audit our product range. Audit your product range, and this can be done by diversifying um, the items that you offer your clients. You can do it by maybe introducing new flavors, new feelings and other items like pastries that you previously haven't been doing or offering to your customers because at the end of the day you need to stay relevant in the market. Niche your top sellers and revamp the low sellers. How do we do this? For the top sellers you can choose to maybe increase size and up on the, on the price just a little bit or for the low sellers you can choose to maybe revamp some of the flavors that have kind of been forgotten by the customers. You can offer them as samples. You can add them just as a slice in the middle of a cake 
for, for a customer to say, mm, I used to enjoy this flavor, maybe I'll have this next time, such that you keep on interesting the customers to keep on coming back and ordering for even those items that had been kind of going out of demand. Put yourself out there. Most people do not know who is open and who isn't, given what is happening at the moment. Engage clients on WhatsApp, Instagram, um, Zoom, you can have, you can even go as far as accepting to have a Zoom interaction with a bride-to-be at the moment, because that is what we have and that is what we can work with at the moment. Now, more than ever, is a time to show your clients that you care and are aware of what is happening in their lives in your own unique way. Be it a wedding that was postponed, stay in touch, call them up, send a cupcake or, or a small cake to somebody who's graduating, to a, to a bride that should have had her wedding sometime this year, but it was cancelled. Send a baby shower cake to somebody, just telling them that you're thinking of them. Because truth is, we know these are the people we deal with. You end up knowing uh, an entire group of people. You can send maybe a, a baby shower cake to somebody. Because you know all her friends are unable to put up a party for them. But once you do something like that, you stay relevant. They know that you think of them. Be open to e-payments because as you know, people at home, they're in offices and are not comfortable walking to the bank or handling cash. So making it easy for them to pay you this way will solve a lot of problems and keep your customers coming. The other thing is you can offer loyalty cards. This will lock in your customers. It helps you track them and also keep them coming back because they know that there are points at the end of every purchase. Importantly, be open and transparent with your clients that have been affected by COVID. I'm sure some of you have received payments or deposits for weddings that didn't happen. They were postponed to maybe 2021 or later this year. Sit down with them. Invite them over, maybe via WhatsApp call or just a normal call and talk about what's to happen, what are their plans, and be flexible in that. Maybe a client had ordered for a cake or made a deposit on cake feeding 200 guests and they come back to you and would like to reduce the numbers to 30 people. Sit down with them, be understanding, talk to them and find a middle ground because when it comes to COVID, there are no winners and losers. We are all in this together. Get creative with virtual experiences to tease new products and generate leads. With this, you can try out anything. You can have fun with your girlfriends, invite them over, do Instagram video, have them test and give their own feedback on what you have baked for them. This will attract people and maybe interest them in wanting to try it out. Alternatively, you can order cupcakes with a message and send them out and maybe even go as far as experiencing that Zoom chat conference cake cutting with them and see if it will work for them. Finally, on the business side of things, we need to survive. We need to stay in business. You need to go back and look at your cash flow, your cash flow expectations, know what to spend on and what not to spend on, what to procure and what not to procure. And when it comes to the people we work with, how do we help them? I am of the suggestion that let's consider avenues to keep them afloat, to keep them working. Maybe consider a rotor system. People can work in shifts or be paid for only the work that they have done, as opposed to just terminating them. Let's keep them around because they've been with us in times when we are in business is good. It's time to show them that we are with them even now during the COVID period. To those tuned in to this webinar, thank you for having me and listening to me. It's been a pleasure. I remain Farida Kalvatanya with Tasty Treats Limited. Up next is Ronald Safari of Fine Foods by Panache. Hi all. Uh, thank you for having me here. Hope you're all keeping safe and uh, um, healthy. My name is Ronald Safari, and I like to think of myself as a very um, professional hotelier, I'm a passionate industry, uh, industry player. Uh, I've had the rare privilege to work with uh, the biggest names in the land. I worked with Serena for seven years and with Sheraton for five years. I currently work with James Cambridge International School. Uh, where we do catering for the um, uh, 
for the fraternity there, 600 people. Uh, you know, it's a premium school, so very good food. Uh, I've also had the opportunity to, to do the same kind of thing with Kawaji International School. Um, it's a very, very exciting job for me. Um, I also have an events management company called Panache, which has handled a number of weddings uh, in the last two years since we started. Now, because this is a webinar, I'm going to keep the points very, very uh, 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 quick, concise, so that uh, we can uh, go through very quickly. Um, I have a very bad feeling about uh, COVID, but I even have a worse feeling about post-COVID. I don't know what it's going to look like after um, after after this whole pandemic is gone. But I, I'm a very firm believer. I've got a philosophy. Um, out of a bad thing usually comes a very, very good thing if you think out of the box. I think that some industries are obviously going to take a... I mean, all of us are taking a very big beating uh, from it. But I think a few industries will have less hits. And I think that uh, catering is one of them if you think out of the box. I think there are some things that we need to do right um, to sort of um, mitigate this and, you know, sail through. Number one is pricing and costing. Uh, the, why I think of that is premised on the fact that uh, on, on, on the experience that people have gone through during the pandemic, people have learned the actual value, the actual, uh, the, the actual cost of, 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 of items. You know, uh, people who buy food at home have said asking questions like, you know, how long should a kilo of rice last? How long should, uh, you know, and how many people can it feed? People have said that's, you'd be, you'd be very surprised. People are now asking how many people can actually uh, eat a kilo of, of, of beef. They will be asking those questions now. So when, they, when they'll be asking us those questions, why are you charging me 80,000 shillings for food? Uh, when I know that for 80k, 80,000 shillings, I could, I, I, could, I, could, I could feed about 20 people um, at home. They'll start asking themselves questions like, should I start, should I probably get my relatives to come and do the, the cooking at home, as opposed to going to big hotels? No. Number two, people will be asking about value for money. What value, what value addition is, 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 is in your product? what we call value add-ons. What are you adding to your product? You know, what, 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 how are you repackaging it uh, for you to, 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 to impress me to come and do it? I, I'll give examples. Um, dating will still happen, uh, whether, we, whether we like it or not. People will still go on dates. Um, a very clever restaurant will not just offer the menu as it is, but they may want to add some value add-ons. You can add, you know, you can make some very good, um, but relatively cheap cocktails and offer glass, for instance, a, a, a Sandria or a Shandy. You know, a Shandy or a, 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 a beer and, uh, and, and a lime or lemon, uh, lemon soda. Or, or Sandria. Sandria is just a, a, wine, a wine cocktail. You can offer those glass. You can offer those. Those are value add and those are things that you, you will do uh, that, cast, that will divert the customer's attention from the prices. You know, and, and, they'll, and they'll focus on the product, you know. The other thing that we need to, do be, to be doing, and I'm, I must speak very passionately about this, is training. I think a lot of things have been going wrong, very, uh, you know, for a very, very long time. Um, Uganda is, uh, and I say with a, lot of, with a lot of pride, Uganda is one of the few places where, you know, there is a market for everyone and for everything. With that having been said, unfortunately, Everybody feels they can try out something. Now, this has led, I've seen a lot of uh, situations. I've been to functions where, you know, the waiters, the chefs, there's been no emphasis put, there's been no effort whatsoever on training them or on grooming. You find waiters with long beards, you find waiters with long nails, you find waiters with, with you know, with, with tight, uh, fitting pants, white socks, and sharp pointed shoes, like you're going for a Michael Jackson show. Uh, you know, but we, we need to move away from that kind of thing and do proper training. Let's expose. Again, it adds, it's a value add on. Give this, let the client feel like, yes, I paid 60,000 shillings. But look at the waiters I'm getting. The other thing that will have, will save us a lot, will be partnerships. 
industry players uh, will have to look um, for partners, for people they can work with to bring the prices down. Let me tell you, the level at which weddings are being, were, were being done in Uganda, you know, we are, we are at, a, at a very, very different level. And it can't go back. No Ugandan will go back. This, the, well, this, the story I hear about, uh, um, what do they call these weddings? Um, um, hexagonal weddings, I don't know. It won't happen, it won't happen only for this time. But eventually, people have to go back to the glamorous weddings. You know? So, but then because they will be cash-strapped, we shall need to provide solutions for them. This is where Panache, an events manager, will talk to Pink Coconut, who is um, um, a very well-known decorator, and talk to Steve Jean uh, of Fenon Events, who, know, who does very, very good lighting, and talk to Lumias of Photogenics, who does very good tents, and sort of all come down on their prices, but pro provide the same kind of glamorous event that was happening pre-COVID. So partnerships can happen. If, if people can build this, if, even with restaurants, um, you can do meal combos. There can be meal combos. If you talk to a brewery, they, they, I'm sure most of them, for, they have a marketing budget where they can be able to provide you beer that you can use to make the shandies that I talked about, you know? Um, the other point is uh, the product, um, again, in line with training. Um, it will be very, very important for people to rethink and ensure their products are top-notch. It's just not acceptable anymore for anyone to just walk into a place and, and, and just get, you know, whatever you want because that's what, you, you know, that's what the, the establishment has. People now know what they want, and they want with the money, that with, the, with the little money that they have, they'll want to have a super product. Nobody is going to be happy to pay eighty thousand shillings to receive, you know, a lackluster kind of service. People want to work. People want to have product. Let's look at what Javas has done. Look at from the waiter, from the ambience. You know, it's all clean and everything. You know, it's very clean. It's very, you know, very well aerated. The food takes time, uh, the right time. Um, the, the waiters are very, very, uh, you know, very well groomed. People will want to pay for things like that. Remember, if you add value to that, it will, it will always make sure that you will always make sure that you have your re your repeat clients. Uh, let's not uh, also forget about the opportunities. Opportunities will be everywhere. There's always an opportunity every time. Um, it will be very, very important for people to be very positive thinking. Um, think hard before you say no. I would say take every opportunity. Work on your uh, BEP or your break-even point and then start working backwards and say, listen, this is what I'm going to offer you. Or if the person needs justification for why you're charging that much, then break it down and show them, listen, I'm, I'm giving you, I'm giving you a filet mignon. You know, it's, it's a, it's a prime card I'm going to get from, you know, from beef. So, so I can't afford to give you a prime card for, for this amount of money. So people have to think so much about opportunities. Think hard before you say no. Sometimes you don't even have to make money out of something. So, sometimes you could, as long as you, you, you just, you know, sort of hit your BEP, your break-even point. As long as you don't make money, but you do a very, very good job, then you have your loyalty, you have, you, you have loyalty, you have people coming back and saying, you know, the other guys did a good job, and now we can think of, <clears throat> you know, increasing their prices. Um, then you can think of in increasing your prices. In line with the product and creating a niche for yourself, allow, allow me to give you an example of, of, of how we started at, at the Serena in 2006. Um, we we're selling our beer at 5,000 shillings, which was the equivalent of our sister company, Nairobi Serena. At 5K beer, that was very, very expensive. But keep in mind, Sheraton, which had been the highest before, was selling at 3.7. The Kafunda was selling at 1.4, 1.3. And everybody kept on saying to us, but 
why are you selling us beer at 5000 shillings what, what what beer is beer club is club it's all you don't bottle it it's bottled somewhere else but we had a different strategy we served our beer with a very clean glass you know um, with a chilled glass we served it with some nibbles with some bitings in a very good environment you know that product that very well chilled beer served by a smiley waitress served with nibbles and bites in an environment where you know your phones are safe people start realizing it's worth the 5k as opposed to uh, the kafundas where you know your phones are not safe your cars are not safe your mirrors are not safe you know so we must start thinking about building this kind of product let's show you know let's show the world that i will charge you 10k but look at my look at my beer price right now the beer the, the beer the serena is twelve thousand shillings people still buy it right so that means that we, we we need to work hard on our product make sure you develop you know we present ourselves as yes, we are competing but we have everyone everyone has got their own niche and you know their own target so let's work on the product Make sure the product is, 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 is extremely, you know, top notch. It can, you know, speak for itself. And together we shall go out of this, you know, we shall, we shall, we shall be able to, 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 to sail through this post COVID um, era. I wish you all the best. Stay home, stay safe. And thank you for your time. Hello, I'm Angie, the Creative Director at Pink Coconut Decor. And I'm Jamelia, you can call me Jam, of It's Showtime Limited. I don't know why it has taken us this long to finally sit down and do something like this, but I'm really glad that we've been able to make the time. Me too, we've talked about it several times. I know, right? Well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some silver lining that has come out of this whole COVID fiasco, I, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So today I would like us to just basically talk about the effects of COVID and how we plan to carry on living as people in this industry going forward from now. Yeah, there's quite a number of challenges, obviously, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we need to find a way to navigate around those. I mean, I, I feel like we've gone back to factory settings yes. and we need to rethink and reinvent ourselves and basically... Think outside the proverbial box, which no longer exists. That's true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Um, so in terms of, uh, maybe I would start off by talking about things like labor. Mm -hmm. We are coming from doing these huge, massive 500, 1,000 uh, guest weddings to 30, 50, 100. Absolutely. What are your plans in terms of, of your human resource? Human resource. That's a big big one for me because I have a big team. I have a team of about 50, yes. as do you. Yes. And now they've been very relevant, like you said, because events have been big and all of that. Now you're doing 20 people, you need three people to do that. Plus yourself, you're going to pitch in a lot more because it's a very small event and you know Absolutely. you need your personal touch in there. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't want to lose my team. It has taken me a, many years to put this team together. Mm -hmm. It's a formidable True. team. True. And, and I'm, I'm hopeful that eventually, um, when we get, uh, what's it called, mass immunity or whatever it's called, or the vaccine comes around or whatever. When this whole COVID thing is behind us, hopefully that will be soon, sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. We will still need these people. They're already trained. They know what to do. So we want to keep them until we're out of the woods. Now, how do you do that if you have 20 people events as opposed to 800 people events? Hopefully, my hope, and this is just a hope because right now, we're still groping around in the dark. We don't know where this is going. My hope is that we'll have more events because now they're smaller. Even the person who's been out there and saying, oh, I don't have, I'm afraid to do something because I can't afford a wedding of 400 people and my, I have got so many friends and all of that can now say, you know what? The circumstances dictate that I have a 30, 40, 50 people wedding. I'll select my family, handpicked people to do that. I'm hoping a lot of people will come out of the woodwork Yes. That we're not on, 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 on course to do these weddings and events mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. But because of this whole scientific thingy, they'll take advantage. I'm hoping that that happens. If it goes that way, then our teams can be split up. 
in a week if you have five events not necessarily on the same day the same day might be a bit tricky but yes. now people will come out and say okay my wedding is on a Thursday we've seen scientific weddings happening on a Tuesday True. I had one yesterday yes. so if, if somebody has one on a Tuesday a couple of them on a Wednesday a couple of them on Friday and a couple of them on Saturday your team can be split up you know and then Absolutely. everybody remains relevant where for a big event where you've had five florists, yes. now you'll have one florist per tiny little event. event. And still True. they're relevant. They're not just sitting around. True. So uh, as we wait on this COVID situation to hopefully get better. True. Um, something else that I was thinking about, Angie, mm-hmm. that I'd, I'd really like to throw out there. Mm-hmm. You know how it's been um, previously as a decorator, you dream of something that you want to do and you know that the resources are available for you uh, from China or from Dubai. And now there's this whole COVID thing. You can't just jump on a plane at a whim and dash off to China and do some shopping for deco. True. How do we, how do you think we can navigate that one? You know, because previously, like I said, we'd just jump on a plane, go to Dubai four days, pick up whatever you're picking up. True. Now it's a bit tricky. Um, especially in my case, I'm a very touch look kind of person uh, and and if you're importing things from china it pays for you to actually be absolutely there, yeah you know so it it has been one of those things where you're thinking and the truth is that um uh, imported stuff is still coming in absolutely just that if a kilo was costing 5.5 dollars now it will cost 8.5 dollars mm-hmm. making it even more expensive for you to be able to purchase these mm-hmm. these items that said um as you mentioned in the start we need to go back to our factory setting Mm-hmm. and realize that it is possible for us to be able to use the resources that are already available to us. Because the truth is that people have not been working for three months. When you go on maternity leave for three months, you come back and most likely somebody else has taken your position. Mm-hmm. Now imagine three months of no work. So people will 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 be... It will not be easy for people to spend the kind of money that they were spending before Mm -hmm. for certain clientele, right? For others, I'm sure they'll carry on with business as usual Mm -hmm. as life is would would have it. Um, I'm thinking that it's time that we start also thinking within. Okay. You know, using more of the resources that are available to us. Absolutely. Luckily enough, I've noticed um, three, four years ago, this whole large floral uh, arrangements came into vogue. But over the years, it slowly started moving on to detail. Yeah. You know, detailed pieces, uh, smarter here, smarter there. You know, just coming together and creating this, you know, beautiful um what would I say, beautiful theme, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe if we can play around with that as well, that would assist. But in terms of imports and exports, we still have no choice. We have to carry on importing these things, but we now have to ensure that we keep the numbers low. Yeah, I agree. However, like you said, you're a touchy-feely person, so am I. And the thing is, imports are coming in. Mm -hmm. If you already know what you're purchasing, but you see the Chinese can be tricky. When you're in China and you're selecting things, they will give you what you select. Sure. When you get back here and you order for the same thing, sure. They will send you that thing, but in a different quality. That has happened to me a number of times. Mm-hmm. So we can only import so much without sure. without samples, without touching or seeing. I, sure. I think we need to go back to the drawing board and see how before this whole importing thing came in. We used to do decor, remember? Yes. We did a lot of organic things and sure. we were thinking using stuff that's available to us here. Not easy. Not easy, but many sleepless nights, mm-hmm. but very possible. It's it's very easy with the import with the imports to just go and, and hire nice pretty chairs and hire nice pretty charger plates. Remember, do you remember the wooden platters we used to do? <laughs> <laughs> I trust me, Angie, they're coming back. Yes. Watch this space. <laughs> they're so coming back. Yeah. So we need to go back to that raw form where you're like, okay, if China was not available to me today, sure. if Dubai was not available to me today, if Nairobi was not available to me to get fresh flowers or whatever, would I still be relevant in this industry? True. If not, how can I get myself in, in line with True. that? True. So Position that's yourself. something to think about. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now that we've spoken about um, imported goods, how about all the stuff that we imported over the years or 
pre-COVID, mm -hmm. you know, like December, the stuff was coming in, October, mm -hmm. November, January, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're just getting ready to start all over again. Mm -hmm. And then here you are stuck with all these items. What would be your advice to those people in this situation? And yes, we all are in. That particular one still eats at me because I'm like, people have brought in all these chairs and no. previously what well, we were hiring, there's a wedding I did that had 1,800 guests mm -hmm. and no one vendor had the number of chairs that I wanted. So yes. I got 600 here, 300 here, 200 there. Now it's different. We want only 20 chairs. We yes. want only 30 chairs. Somebody has a whole warehouse full of the different chairs and we've been encouraging them to import these things. We're like, oh, yeah. there's this chair that's trending. Yes. Please get that. There's this charger plate. Please get that. Yeah. Having said that, that's about like vendors that hire stuff to us. Yes. But then there's also the stuff in our warehouses. Yes. Uh, that one is a, is a tough one. Eh? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm thinking you, previously, Angie, and I think this has been on your side as well as mine and probably other people. Mm -hmm. We've been importing things back to back, back to back. So sometimes you import stuff and you use it once, twice and Second forget time. about it. It goes into the store and you don't even remember. Mm -hmm. This is the time to look inside. True. And pull out that stand that you imported for this wedding that you haven't ever used again. You've True. forgotten about completely. If you go into your store today, you will find stuff there, Angie, that you've forgotten about for five years. Absolutely. Plus. Absolutely. That's really good and can be used now. Now, that I, I pity the people that have stuff for hire. There'll be a, a, there, there should be a solution to this. It's just we haven't figured it out yet. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happens to our colleagues that hire us staff and have a lot of things and... And now we're taking such small numbers. It, it's it's really a big one. I don't know the way forward on that it. one, mm. but it's something that needs to be thought about. I'm I'm thinking, you know, we were always going back to the basics. I think patience, mm -hmm. because I recall when we got into this business, when when I would send out my quotation, people would literally run crazy, like what, what the hell just That's happened? Going on. But slowly by slowly, they started understanding. Mm -hmm. So I think it's our duty as service providers to start creating synergies amongst ourselves. Yes. Whereby we will say that, you know what, Photogenics Events Limited, uh, Tents for You has a certain type of tent mm -hmm. that can be split up. Exactly. So you, you'll tell a client, you know what, we might not need the whole tent, but how about we get this section? Mm -hmm. It will still look good. So if we're able to sell each other's products and services, mm -hmm. then before you know it, we shall rise together. I truly believe the human the human beings are created in such a way that we have the ability to forget, True. to rejuvenate, to come back from the worst situations. Mm -hmm. And when we do, we come back real, you know, all the way. Yeah. So I'm hoping that this will happen. And now this brings me to my next question. Uh, the scientific weddings, mm -hmm. right? Which I believe we, you know, because scientific according is supposed to be 10, maximum 10 people. Mm -hmm. But slowly by slowly, it started, you know, maybe including 20 people. Usually it doesn't go beyond the limit that they have agreed upon. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's social distancing as well. But do you believe that these scientific weddings, at least on my side, I believe that we are going to start a new trend? Yeah. statement weddings where somebody is going to have the same budget but for less people exactly and then we will be able to get all the you know the ideas they come with off you know social media and everything we'll be able to execute them because we are now going small i totally in agree. the olden days some people would have you 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 you, you get a section like mm -hmm. for example you say walkway or high table or ceiling mm -hmm. but now i think it's possible for us to be able to do Beautiful, small, intimate weddings that start from the stationery. Yeah. You know, even the kind of client um, interaction and interfacing that we are going to have is going to become more intimate. Yeah, I agree. So in, on my side, I'm thinking these statement weddings are a blessing in disguise. And, and I think people are going to catch on to that because previously, if you were going to do a wedding of a thousand people mm -hmm. and spend so many millions on this wedding... Now you're going to do a wedding of, of 50 people. Yes. And you still have all these resources available to you. Absolutely. So if you probably won't spend as much. Absolutely. But you can still put in a, a, a good amount of money to have something that is superb. Have you seen the Lebanese weddings? Yes. Do you know how much money goes into those tiny little weddings? Yes. 
they're, they're able to do that because the weddings are not so big. Some of True. them are so big. Of course, those guys are, are billionaires and whatnot. But the yes. smaller weddings, you can have a real construction of the whole site. True. You can do a proper installation. Where we've been doing ceiling installations that are just along the middle because the tent is so big. True. Now the tent is a fifth. Of what, what you had used before. to be. That's so true. that installation, as you are going to put it in the big tent, will now do the whole ceiling of this smaller tent. True. So I'm hoping that people will pick up on this. Mm-hmm. Scientific doesn't necessarily mean cheap or tacky oh, yes. it's or shoestring or yes. you know less than 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 you know average. It doesn't mean that. Mm-hmm. It, it just talks about numbers. That's all. But quality doesn't have to be reduced. Actually, true. quality of the work should go up that's that's absolutely it true. should go up that's absolutely because you're not true. spreading yourself thin on anything the client isn't spreading themselves thin on anything and neither are you the service provider true so whoever opts for a scientific wedding should be able to get the best of the best honestly yeah if, honestly. if people can get the best of the best in these big ginormous weddings that we've been doing what about the smaller ones but again it's something we need to discuss we need to educate the clients true we need to navigate this together true um it's a scary situation, to be honest. True. And um, and then still on, on, on the subject of scaling down and all of that, scaling down, I insist, should be on numbers, not on quality. True. Not on quality. In fact, when you scale down on numbers, quality should be able to scale up. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I completely agree. Mm-hmm. I completely agree. So there you've had it. Statement weddings are the next big thing. If you can give 1,000 people the wedding of a lifetime, imagine what you could do with 50 people. So let's get cracking, put our heads together, create synergies, cohesive teams that can be able to make dreams happen. Jamelia, thank you so much for accepting to join us on this webinar. Thank you for having me, Angie. It's been fun. Great fun. We should do this more often. We should, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> right after we lose all the COVID weight. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, if we're brave enough to do it with the weight on, yeah. imagine when the weight is off. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time. We'd like to thank everybody who's joined us on this webinar. Please kindly hit the like button and follow us on all our social media platforms.